Welcome back to Next Gen Investing. It's time for a look at a developing story with Kevin Green, Senior Markets Correspondent here for the network. So, Kevin, today we are looking at Apple as they did float this concept of allowing trading on their iPhones in a partnership with Goldman Sachs, but then pulled that idea back and said that's actually not going to happen. So walk us through the story. Yeah, definitely. This is first reported by CNBC, but they are saying that in 2020, during the height of the you know stock and COVID uh, boom that we saw when it came to retail trading, Apple and Goldman Sachs were working on a project in order to uh, give features on the iPhone to be able to buy and sell stock. Now, they also are stating that this infrastructure, for the most part, is readily available at this point in time, but they did pause the project last year because of the market downturn and instead really focused on that high yield savings account that has been touted over a while now. Here. Now, this is not the first time that we have seen a partnership with Apple and Goldman Sachs. They also offered a credit card in 2019. They also had a, a buy now, pay later type of service as well. So they continue to try to find ways that they can partner with each other. But once again, I think uh, th you can see uh, Apple making a, a little bit of a cautious move when it comes to uh, getting into the trading space here. Now, this is also in relation to Goldman Sachs in a way. Goldman Sachs has really changed their mind when it comes to uh, trying to enter into the consumer space or trying to expand that business. So they're really trying to refocus their efforts on more institutional trading, which has been their bread and butter, M&A activity as well. And so I'm not sure if this is going to be something that does come uh, along here in the future, but it does show that that Apple continues to try to push the limits when it comes to new markets that they could enter into. And they're looking for opportunities to partner with other individuals and uh, financial institutions in order to expand their brand. One thing to kind of just note here, Jenny, from a regulatory standpoint, they're going to probably work with a financial institution if they ever were to go into this route of uh, trading stocks and, and trying to expand uh, their, their financial business for consumers because of regulatory factors. So that's probably why we are seeing this continued partnership with Goldman Sachs. Uh, um, even though that this uh, plan was, uh, for the most part, uh, you know, put on pause, uh, you know, this could always be a factor that comes up here in the future. Yeah, and that's a great, great point. It's actually exactly what I was going to ask you. Given the scrutiny of Apple's app store as of late and it's being accused of sort of the gamification process. So this name has been met with some, some adversity regarding its app store practices, which I found so interesting. But we did also get the rollout of iOS 17 today. And so I have to ask you about all things iPhone 15, which coincides to me with the new software rollout. I mean, right now I've seen so many thoughts, so many polarizing opinions that it's going to be like the best iPhone cycle, that it's going to be absolutely crushed by demand in China. I mean, what are you seeing? Yeah, I think there's some mixed reports that are out there. We do have some analysts that are very bullish on this name, and they do uh, say that their channel checks show that there's about a 10 to 15 percent increase when it comes to demand compared to the iPhone 14 when it first rolled out. Uh, and then you have uh, other analysts that say that the, maybe the demand in China is actually a little bit weaker than what people expect. I'm not sure what to expect at this point in time, Jenny. I think the biggest issue when it comes to Apple right now is going to be the production factor, making sure that they can create and deliver these iPhone 15 products on time. We actually heard like the day after their event that they could delay uh, you know, their, their full production rollout by uh, four to five weeks. I mean, that's something that you really do not want to hear. And production issues has been a, uh, a little bit of an issue when it comes to uh, Apple as of late here. So I think that's going to be the biggest focus. I'm not sure what the overall demand is going to be. We're going to have to wait until those totals actually come out. Um, but overall, I think, uh, once again, I think production is the biggest focus, uh, not so much consumer demand as we have seen a little bit of delay when it comes to the refresh cycle that Dan Ives from Wedbush really talks about. You know, yeah. Um, a lot. And selfishly, I mean, you mentioned some of the delays. I've also heard whispers of these delays, specifically with the iPhone 15 Pro Max, which is what I ordered. So I'm just selfishly hoping that they can figure it out and all is well and I get my iPhone on time, although that is such a first world problem. I, I am so aware. But Apple lower today, giving up the initial strength we saw and really great breakdown. Kevin Green, senior markets correspondent here for the network.